What's up, you guys? Sean Ross app, Fightful.com. Here with a name that figures to be a big part of Ring of Honor's future. We got Sledge. How you doing? What's up, buddy? I'm, I'm excited I'm about stoked. this. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm stoked. I'm all red. Look, it's like I'm, it's like I'm looking at a celebrity right now. Oh, man. my like, God. I'm, I'm, Come I'm on. I'm a big fan of yours, dude, so I'm stoked. I appreciate that. Well, uh, let, let's get right into it. Ring of Honor recently announced that you had re-signed. And from what I understand, you had, you had actually signed there before the pandemic, but like stuff had unfolded or that you were, you were coming into ring of honor before the pandemic. How, how did all this unfold the process of, of coming into the company and then uh, signing with them? I actually, it was, it, it was a pretty quick process, but it was actually a very long process. Um, I was, I kind of got hot on the Indies doing uh, right after I did the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast. And then I did impact pro wrestling. I did one of their pay-per-views. So I kind of got, had a little bit of that, like that indie darling name, but Ring of Honor didn't really know who I was at all. But I did know some of the people that worked at Ring of Honor uh, that were talent. So they came to Las Vegas, and something in my gut told me I had to go. Something in my gut was like, yo, bro, you got to go. So I went, and I set up the ring. I, I, I busted my butt. I set up the ring. I said, if you guys need anything, let me know. I'm here. And then uh, one of the guys... Uh, named Ryan Ginley, um, who was part of the road crew, put me next to the producer at the time. Was like, yo, you need to take a look at this guy. Uh, he asked me if I had stuff. Uh, I gave him some stuff the next day. And then about a week later, I got a call saying, hey, do you want to come to Madison Square Garden <laughs> to the G1? And I'm like, yes, I would love to. I'm going to be in New York anyway. And I wasn't there for maybe about 10 minutes. They offered me a tryout. Um, did the tryout, and then they asked me, will you become part of the Ring of Honor dojo, and we'll put you on the ring trucks. So I wasn't even signed when I went to the dojo. I relocated from California to Baltimore, unsigned talent, for an opportunity to be signed with Ring of Honor. And they said that I'd put you, we'll put you on the ring trucks, put some uh, money in your pocket, you could train at the dojo, and then we'll just we'll kind of see where it goes. And within six months, uh, they signed me. So how did that feel for you? Because, I mean, you're one of those guys that, that doesn't have a wealth of worldwide exposure, but you do have a wealth of experience. Like, you've been around, you, you've worked a lot. So, I mean, that's, that's got to be attractive to a wrestling company. That way, like, they get, they, people can identify Sledge with ROH. Like, that's got to be important for, for people like them. When you're asked to come to the dojo after you did have all that experience, were you, like, all on board? Were you hesitant? Anything like that? Um, it was one of those things where was, like, I had to come come back home and, and talk to my support system and talk to everybody that's around me and be like, hey, what, is this the right move for you to do? Because it, it could do one of two things. It can make you or it can literally break you and then you'll be done. Um, and one of those things where it's like if you get the opportunity to do something, not every day Ring of Honor comes and says, hey, we want you to come and do this for us. Yeah. Not every day. And, and those tryouts are a clear path to, to getting, like, I know Josh Woods did it. Like, a yes. lot of people have went through those tryouts and ended up being full-time, full-fledged stars in ROH. Right, right. And and that's kind of the way I looked at it, too, is, like, if they're asking me to do this, and you got guys like Josh Wood, you got the Mile High Magnum, you know, Dak Draper, you got all these other guys that have came through the Ring of Honor system, the Ring of Honor dojo system that are making stuff, making stars out of themselves, why would I not do this? So I, I called them back, I want to say, within probably about 48 hours. And was like, yeah, let's do this. And they said, well, report in September. And I said, okay. And then uh, they signed me. My official deal went into uh, effect March 1st of 2000. Yeah, 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 dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. March 1st of 2020. And uh, the pandemic shut everything down like March 7th or 8th. I know where I was March 1st, 2020. I was flying back. I was covering AEW Revolution. And I remember the day before I was talking to, to Eric Stevens. He was like, man, he's like, my retirement show is playing for Mania. It ain't happening. He's like, that, he's like the world is going to change big over the next few weeks. And even still then, I was like, really? how much? How much could it? We'll get it under control. Everything will be all right. Everything was not all right. So, I mean, the, how how were you feeling? I mean, you did you had a guarantee at that point, didn't you? Yes, yes. I had, <laughs> I had to feel pretty good yeah. then. It, it was it, thanking my lucky stars. It really was. 
but I also make a joke out of it, like the world crashed because Sledge signed a contract. <laughs> 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 so, uh, because I had, you know, a number amount of people that believe that I don't belong to be in Ring of Honor because of, you know, my past and, you know, my, my addictions and, you know, me dealing with alcoholism and stuff like that. A lot of people don't believe that I, that I belong in Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor thought different. They believe that I belong to be here, and I'm showing the world right now that I do belong to be here. So uh, you're at the dojo. Who are you learning from the most there? Like, or were there were there different things from different people? I'm I'm really interested to learn how that goes, especially again from somebody who has as much experience as you, because I know that working for Ring of Honor can be a different experience. It's a television product and in an evolving one. I've noticed a major shift on screen since they came back from the pandemic. Like That's new angles, new production, and everything. Beautiful. It's absolutely a, an amazing production. We have the best wrestling on the planet right now, bar none. Today is actually the birthday of Ring of Honor, and I'm yeah. happy I'm doing this with you. So, so who, but yeah, who, would, you your, say, who would you say that you learned the most from there, or, or anything specific that, that you look back on and you're like, man, I'm glad I had that learning experience at the dojo? Uh, Will Ferraro was a big one. Will has been in my corner. He's one of the he's the head Ring of Honor dojo uh, coach. He's been in my corner since day one, since the day I met him in Las Vegas. Man, he's been in my corner, and I, I can't thank him enough. I, I really can't because and, and same with Dak Draper and um, Moses from SOS. Oh yeah, yeah, man, those guys. They all came Moses and Khan. They all came from the dojo system, man. Same with like Joe Keys and you know Ken Dixon and all these guys that that are. That you're seeing O'Shea Edwards, you know, that I just got done, you know, beating the hell out of, you know, we both beat the hell out of each other, you know. Um, all those guys, all you get a talent, all those talented guys in one room, man. All it's gonna do is push you to be harder, be, be yeah, just, just the most amazing talent as possible. And it is different from working the independents to working with a TV product because you have to find cameras, you have to know which way to look, you have to know certain ways. So it was good to learn that even more and then being on the road with ring of honor because i was at every single show because i was driving the ring trucks learning the production behind ring of honor as well was a huge huge learning experience of knowing camera one to camera two the watching this watching will ferraro uh, for our work behind the scenes of you know direct you know the, being directed and all this fun stuff it's just it, it was it's a great learning experience and i'm still learning to this day so how did it get brought up, uh, the, the prospect of re-signing with Ring of Honor? And how, how were you feeling? Because obviously you hadn't been able to get in the ring probably by the time that those negotiations had started. Or had they made it clear from, from the beginning that it was a foregone conclusion? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, this last year of 20, 2020 has been so nerve-wracking for me because – Number one, Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor fans have no idea who I am. Yes, they've rolled out a couple little vignettes about me from the dojo. I've done a couple interviews here and there, but no one knows who I am. So knowing that is Ring of Honor could have very easily just cut ties with me. It was like, hey, you know, we're, we're you know, we haven't really invested a whole lot into you. It was I'm sorry the way it went down, but maybe we'll take a look at it at a later time. But what's been so good about Ring of Honor, man, is they've taken care of us through the whole pandemic. That's what I keep hearing. I keep hearing they, such positive things about the way that Ring of Honor dealt with things. I, was, I mean, I was asking people from every company, like, how are people treating you? I had one person say, man, I got a raise during the pandemic. Like, that's, that's wild when you've got other companies that are laying people off by the dozens, if not hundreds. Right. And then resigning like a bunch of, you know, indie guys. Go figure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, and when I, when I was having talks with Ring of Honor going into the new 2021 year, they said, you know, and it's great to have, you know, it's great to have good bosses. Yeah. The bottom line, I have great bosses. And they both told me, dude, we see a future with you. Stick with us. We're, we're going to make something. You're, you're, you're a hell of a talent. Just stick with us. And it, when, when the bosses say that, like, why would I want to go anywhere else? Yeah. You know, so I, I resigned for, for another year and we're, we're going to see how 2021 looks. It's already looking way better than 2021 right yeah. now because I'm sitting here with you, you know, and I just debuted on, you know, and 
uh, I've done the Ring of Honor podcast. I've done a number amount of podcasts and video casts and all this fun stuff. And, it, you know, it's, it's all looking up from here. So one of the, the first times I, I want to say that, that you were on my radar was the impact show that you mentioned and Eli really? Drake you who, knew of me after that. <laughs> well, Eli Drake just popped up as LA Knight in WWE. And that. I remember then, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm watching a show and I don't know about somebody, I'm looking up people and, and thinking, Okay, well, how how was this connection made? I realized that you had wrestled Eli Drake like multiple times uh, throughout that year. Yeah. Was was that something that he like he put in a good word? Like, how does that work? Because I, obviously, if Impact Wrestling has someone come in and work one of their top guys like Eli Drake, they got to have confidence in it in, in that person, or that person has to have confidence in you. So how that happened was I was actually originally to face. Uh, Dave Chris okay from OVE yeah I think it was OVE at the time uh and somebody got hurt on the show so they put OVE in a tag match so that was the original match was supposed to be me versus Dave Chris or I think his name's Dave Chris and they switched it up that day it was like yo Scott Demore came out to me he was like yo uh we, we, we know, you know, you're a hell of a talent. We want to put you with Eli Drake. And I'm like, well, that's okay. You know, we've done this dance multiple times. So um, it's always funny when I see when I see Eli. When he walks in, we always look at each other. We go, yep. And we just kind of, <laughs> yep, yep. You know, all right. You know, we saw each other in Texas. We've seen, I've wrestled him so many times. But getting in the ring with a guy like that, a talent like Eli Drake, or as you call him now, the L.A. Knight. <laughs> All he's going to do is up your game. Yeah. And you're going to learn from him. And doing that impact match and putting on the performance that we did and us going back through the curtain and Scott Demore coming up to me going, dude, that was the one of the best matches we've had of all night. That makes you feel I. I'm really surprised they didn't sign me, Sean. I really? <laughs> really? Look, I, mean, yeah, I was going to really ask was. if you had a follow-up or, or any feedback, but, I mean, obviously Scott Demore lo- liked the match, but you were expecting, like, something more out of that? I wasn't necessarily expecting more out of it, but maybe a different opportunity down the road, like maybe, like, when they come to Las Vegas or something like Maybe some kind of c- contact there. Um, I did talk to Scott a little bit more. Um, who's the other uh, – uh, what's his name? Who's managing – Kenny Omega right now. Don, Don Callis. Don Callis. Yeah. Right. Don Callis came up to me because he did uh, the commentary as well. And he's like, dude, that was great. Absolutely effing fantastic. You you got a bright future, kid. You know, and I, I was expecting more. And there was talks, but nothing really, like, came out of it. So uh, You had also, I know, wrestled Nick Aldis on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. I did. And we're talking, like, full-on NWA world title run Nick Aldis. Nicholas. Right there. I mean, he, I mean, still is as the time, as of when we're filming this. What was that experience like? I know that a lot of people that come out of the West Coast, they go through championship wrestling from Hollywood. It's like a normal stop for a lot of people out there. That was my first time working there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I mean, I, let, let's yeah. be real. Dave Marquez and Nick Aldis are like this. That's another situation. They got to trust you an awful lot to put you in that yeah. spot. I, I have no idea how, how it actually came about. Um, I, I was there because I was heading to WWE to do extra work for WWE when they were in San Diego. And I was with a former guest of yours, Zicky Dice, um, the outlandish one. <laughs> you know, we go, me and Ziggy go way back. We're, we're good friends. And we we're traveling up to San Diego together to do the WWE loop. And he's like, hey, I got to stop at Hollywood and do Hollywood on Sunday. I was like, all right, I'll go with you. You know, I know a couple of the boys there. I'll just, you know, hang out, yeah. watch, them, watch them wrestling. Why not? Uh, I was there maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour or so. They walked up to me. He was like, hey, do you want to wrestle Nick Aldis? Sure. Why not? <laughs> I'm here. I got my gear. Why not? Don't twist so my wrote, arm. Yeah, right. I was just like, sure. Why not? I'll wrestle Nick Aldis. And then next thing I know, it was on the 10 pounds of gold and, you know, and then I had it on my YouTube channel and then NWA took it down. So, oh. Yeah, it was one of, like, the highest viewed things, too. And, like, they took it down. I'm just like, all right. You know, it was a good match. It was fun. It was crisp. It was easy. Uh, Nick Aldis is Nick Aldis. I'm, there it is. I, I know you've also wrestled, like, people like Jeff Cobb and, and yep. Cal Jack, J.R. Kratos, who have 
really found like a foothold in the blood sport. Blood sport, yeah. I mean, is that something you'd like to do as well? You're you're seeing a whole lot of people that that show their skill set there, and people are like, "Oh, I didn't know." Like Karrion Cross before that, I don't think a lot of people knew he was training to be an actual uh, pro MMA fighter he's before he shooter. did yeah. pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah, no, he's a straight shooter. Uh, same with uh, guys like Super Beast, and yeah, you know, uh, all, all these. I, I, it's cool to see, like Roy Sizes. It's cool to see the Cali guys because we're such an island out here in California. Yeah. It's kind of like Texas. Texas is kind of like a big island, right? It's cool to see the California guys get their due, like Jr. Kratos, what he's doing, you know, with New Japan Pro Wrestling and now with Bloodsport. You know, uh, Cal Jack, former NXT guy. I've faced Cal Jack multiple times, man. He's he's just a good dude. Um, Royce Isaacs, former NWA guy, Love now Royce doing Isaac. the blood sport thing. You know, Royce Isaacs, you know, I've known Royce since he was in the Colorado days. I wrestled him in Colorado, you know, knew something, knew the kid was going to be, you know, who he is today. You know, um, I would love to go that route because I do have an MMA background. And I would love to go into blood sport and roll around with these guys. I, I really would, but it has to be the right place, right time. And I would have to obviously get in contact with Barnett, so. And, I mean, because you, you got Young Bucks in AEW, you've got – once these connections are formed, like you said, to these these islands, you start to see the talent infiltrate those promotions more. Like Thunder Rosa in AEW. You're starting to see a yeah. lot of Texas women pop up on AEW now because she's got that connection with Mission Pro. Uh, I, I always like seeing how it, it's like a domino effect from there. And once one or two show up, they're like, oh, this is an untapped resource out here. And it just keeps going and going. Are there any from out west that you're looking at and you're like, man, you know what? They should probably be under a contract somewhere. There's a lot of guys. There really are. I watch everybody, Sean, to be honest. I watch everybody in silent. I usually don't, I don't jump on Twitter and Instagram or anything like that and start burying people <laughs> or putting people over or any of that crap. Um, if I have something to say to them, I will send them a private message. Be like, yo, dude, this is cool stuff. I really enjoy watching this stuff. Keep grinding. Something cool will come out. Um, man, there's so many guys out of Texas. There's so many guys out of Colorado. Um, out of California, there's multiple guys. I mean, the list is just so long that I, I would be here all day talking about each, each every single individual. You know, but Thunder Rosa is originally, you know, from California. Yeah. They moved, to te you know, moved from Texas. And I've known Thunder for – Ever since she broke into the business, and I'm very, very happy for her. I'm very proud of her what she's, what she's accomplished now with Mission Pro and NWA, and now tapping into AEW and like making that huge connection. Will Hobbs, another one from yeah. California, a guy who's grinded his butt off for years and years and years on the independent scene, man. And I faced Will Hobbs multiple times, and it was just that one thing at AEW, and they saw something in him, and they were like, "Let's sign you." You know, so you just never know what they're looking for at the time. You really don't know. And I guess it's like if Tony Khan likes you, then you'll, he'll sign you. If you don't, yeah. then I, I really I honestly don't know because I don't know the AEW. You know, I know a bunch of people there, but I just don't know their motto of how they sign people. You bringing up Zicky reminded me of another match that you were in. And Royce was, too, that Black Craft Battle Royal. And I, I remember that weekend I kept hearing. This show is a nightmare. The oh, show is a Jesus. nightmare. <laughs> was, it, <laughs> was it as bad? Because like I never heard specifics. I was just I just heard this match was a nightmare. It was terrible, or the, the show was a nightmare, uh, and it was terrible. But as I as I look back, I just pulled it up. I'm like, there's a lot of people that I know in that match. I can't yeah. believe I haven't heard more about this since. Well, as you see, Black Craft is no longer running. <laughs> yes, I, I don't think they ever ran after that. <laughs> after that show, because it was that bad. I actually had Madison Square Garden the next day. Oh, God. And I what? didn't get – yeah. And what, it was in New what Jersey. A, what a bipolar weekend that Jeez, it was so is. horrible. It was so bad. I think I got into – I think I got into New York. By the way, New York is just the most expensive place. I've, I live in California. That's the most expensive place I've ever been in my life. Um, it was, I was very pleased that I got the opportunity to do what I did with, with black craft, being a metal, being the metal head that I am working for a company like black craft, something that I've always wanted to do. Um, I, I contacted them multiple times to come and work for them. They were just like, Hey man, we just, you know, we just don't have the budget for you, brother. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, man, if you guys stop 
you know, your budget stopped being $15,000 a show, you know, you probably could afford me, you know, it's all good. Anyway, I digress. It was, we're all shoved in this little room, man. Like we're all sardines, bro. In this upstairs little room, it was, it was absolutely ridiculous to be in the ring. Literally, by the way, we thought our match was getting cut. Oh, we thought God. the battle world was going to be absolutely cut. It was like five minutes long. I watched it. I remember. Yeah. Oh. We thought it was going to be cut. I literally was there for, fuck, I was there for, I was there for a long time. For, I don't know, two minutes in the fucking ring, if that. I remember watching that, and I remember looking up and down, and I still vividly remember the talent. Pentagon was on that show. Ray Phoenix was on that show. John Morrison. Yep. Masato fucking Tanaka was on that yep. show. Gangrel, who can still go. Uh, OVE were on there. And that's before we get to the Battle Royal, where you got, like, Lady Frost, Zicky Dice, Sledge, Royce Isaacs. I don't know how you could book a bad show. Like, you could accidentally book a good show. What happened was it was the timing of it. Oh, man. So the venue told them, because they ran at, like, I think midnight. Yeah. The venue told them they had to be out by 1.30. Oh, no. So that's probably why we got those really weird short title short matches. fucking matches, like five minutes, because they tried to shove eight pounds of shit in a five-pound bag. I, I, I see, now, I can't remember this vividly, but I thought I remembered, like, there being a couple, like, title matches that were, like, two or three seconds or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think John Morrison dropped the title in, like, the matter of, like, minutes. Oh, it, it did nothing for either one of those guys. My God. Yeah. That's, that's such a bummer, like, because— when you think back about all that, Butcher and the Blade were on that show too. Like yeah. mm -hmm. that was when I first met Butcher and the Blade, man. Good yeah. guys. Good oh, guys. When, when I saw them in Toronto, I was like, "Is that Pepper Parks?" Like I didn't realize that was him. He had reinvented himself. But uh, you had also mentioned earlier doing some extra work for WWE. How'd that come about, and, and what'd you do? Uh, I was in the Conga Line. Dun, 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 nice. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> um. First off, I did I did extra work for WWE back in like 2013 when I was really going through like my alcohol addiction, drug okay. addiction, kind of in the middle of it. Um, I actually had a WWE tryout too in 2013. I was one of the, I want to say the second tryout ever in the Performance Center. Ooh, um, how was that's how when, was that? Like, who leads you through that? Uh, so that's where like Lars got signed out of. Um, who else got signed out of that class? Uh, a couple of the other guys, I, I can't remember, a couple of the WWE guys that are bigger now yeah, um, got signed out of that class. And it was, um, I had a contact. So uh, Ryan Smiley, who was one of the producers there for NXT, if I'm not mistaken, that's his, that's his uh, title. He, he got a wind of me on the indies in California. We were at a show and he's like, dude, have you ever said anything to WWE? And I was like, no, you know, I, I don't even know how to even get in contact with WWE. And he's like, send me some stuff, I'll forward it. And I was like, all right, cool. Didn't think anything of it. SummerSlam weekend comes around. They contact me via phone. This is, you know, and I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, and they're like, we want to invite you to, to do extra work. And I said, cool, what do I wear? And they're like, a suit. And I was like, I don't own a suit, but okay, I'll do that. Uh, I went to like the thrift store, got like a little crappy suit. It was, it was bad. Um, and then I got an email uh, within like a couple more minutes said, hey, we want to give you a WWE tryout. And we're going to pay for all the expenses. I was like, oh, shit, I got to take off a bunch of time from work. They're not going to like this. Uh, and that's when I was going through a lot of problems. And I didn't do well at the WWE tryout at, at all. It wasn't, it wasn't good. I, I came in out of shape. I didn't, I didn't take it as seriously as I should have. I, I literally, Sean, I had the golden ticket. Yeah. And I ripped up the fucking golden ticket because of my drug addiction and my alcohol addiction. I mean, that, that, does that put things in perspective for you to work harder at that and stay sober and all that that stuff now? Like thinking that oh yeah, I may yeah, have messed up that opportunity. I never thought that I would ever hear from WWE again, ever. They were just like, they literally like wrote an email like, I have no idea why you even showed up. That was kind of like the email I got. Really? Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's a little snug. Who does that come from? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was from. Canyon? With, yeah, I couldn't remember if he was around at that time. I remember. Oh, yeah, he was. 2013 was a wild year for tryouts. Looking back at it, because I remember there was one tryout where like ten people got hurt. That was like I don't know if that was that one, but then there were. I know Adam Cole didn't didn't get picked up after his tryout there. Yeah. 
Uh, Dijak didn't get picked up after his tryout there. Like, it's, it's wild to look back at that year and how just one year later, the hiring process was completely different, like, around then because uh, I think they started to, to see things. When, when you're seeing the, the hiring process of WWE change and other companies change, how is that making you feel as a performer? Like, are you like, hell yeah, I'm up to the task? Or, or are you like, I'm going to change some stuff? I'm going to switch some stuff up? To be honest, man, I was so blitzed out of my mind, I, did, I didn't care. Damn. I, yeah, man, I, I was bad, bro. Like, I, I didn't care. I thought I, thought I, was, I thought I was done with wrestling. I really did. Um, I, I, I did something very stupid, and it was – I really honestly thought I was done with wrestling, man. I got into a match, extremely intoxicated, blitzed out of my mind. Oh, man. Yeah, and then next thing you know, uh, a video was going around about me and being sent to over 100 and something promoters and saying, don't book me because I am a complete car crash. So how do you Just, rectify that with promoters? Like when you're back at it and you are clean, do you have promoters saying, yeah, but what about this? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm still I, – I, that's one of the things like the stigma – you know, I'm six and a half years, almost seven years clean and sober. Yeah. And I still have that stigma over me of like, why did Ring of Honor hire an addict? Yeah. Why did Ring of Honor go after the, why did Ring of Honor go after this guy when he, he could have went after me who hasn't fucked up in his life? Sure. Everybody's fucked up in their life. Everybody's done something stupid. Okay. We're not all angels. We're not all saints. All right. Um, it was honestly watching Lucha Underground that really kind of got okay. me motivated. It, it, it really was. I saw a lot of guys that I wrestled with on the indies get picked up by Lucha Underground, and they weren't too far from me. I mean, they were Boyle Heights in Los Angeles, four, four hours away from me. That's what really kind of kicked my butt into gear of like, hey, maybe I was miserable, man. So because all I did was once I got sober, all I did was depressant. Yeah. So then I went from. One addiction to another addiction, and then I ballooned up really big, and I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm just like, man, like, miserable. I, I have a good job. I work for the cable company. I'm, I'm a linesman. I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm one of the top in my company. I, I'm making good money. I'm just I'm miserable, man. I'm just like, man, this sucks. And I'm watching guys like, you know, Jeff Cobb, Marty the Moth, uh, uh, Willie Mack, you know, you name them, like guys that I've wrestled multiple times on, on the independents. Getting a shot with Lucha Underground, like Little Cholo yeah. and, and El Mariachi Loco, and you know the list goes on. And to that point, I was just like, you know what? I've been kind of out of the wrestling scene. I wrestle maybe once a month at that. Let's see if I can get back in. Let's see if I can. Let's test the waters. Let's see. But first, I have to be in good shape. Yeah, I have to shed the pounds. I have to get in good shape and show people not just act like a wrestler be a wrestler look the part be the part live the part and at that point man is i started making the transformation of my body i started making the transformation in my life mentally physically and emotionally and if if it wasn't for and i started running my own wrestling promotion while all this was going on and me making the transformation so what was happening was like a a domino effect People, I would book these guys, and they would go back to the promoters. They'd be like, and the promoters would be like, "Well, how was Sledge? Oh, Sledge is killing it. He's doing great. Maybe you should bring him to the show." And then they would contact me, and then I would come to the show. And being at the right place at the right time, man, with um, that Steve Austin podcast, and it kind of helped launch me into a different bracket, man. That's what really put the the uh, uh, put the I guess the rocket. The launch for the rocket to go, you know, I guess would be the best way to put it, you know, uh, that really launched me. That's when I really started. People started really noticing that I was back and I was serious. So how, how did you get in touch with Steve Austin or vice versa to appear on that show? I stalked him and I knocked on his door. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I went, let me tell you, if that if it were that easy, I'd have a Steve Austin interview by now. Yeah, dude, I went and knocked on 316 Gimmick Street. It was like, yo, brother, give me an interview. No, um, I was traveling with a buddy named AJ Kirsch. Oh, who, I know who AJ is. AJ is a good The following program helped me actually make the body transformation and really actually believed in me saying, hey, bro, I'm going for this. And he's like, let's go. Let's do yeah. it. We're traveling to a show. And he goes, hey, man, I might have to drop you off 
at a Starbucks or something on Sunday. And he's an actor. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, you're probably have an audition or something like that. Cool. Drop me off at a Starbucks. My sister lives in LA. I'll hang out with my sister, whatever. Next, you know, we're driving a little bit and his phone goes off. And it's Steve Austin across this thing. I look at him and he kind of goes and he like gives me like the, you know, and he, <laughs> and he knew and him he, through tough enough, right? He like, knew him through tough enough, yeah. right? And AJ also has been on his podcast before, mm -hmm. so he was going over there to talk about him being Buzz in the two K eighteen game, <laughs> yeah, and him blowing his wheel out. He blew his knee out during during the whole process. Oh, so wow. he was going over there to promote the game and how he blew his wheel out and all this other stuff. And Austin jumps on the mic and he's like, "Hey, what time are you coming over, kid?" On Sunday, and I'm like, "You mother, you son of a, mm, I, I think I cussed him every word underneath the book right there." And uh, he goes, "Ah, oh, one o'clock. You know what time's good for you?" He's like, "Oh, one o'clock, so I can go to the gym." Yada yada yada. And AJ out of nowhere was like, "Hey, bro, do you mind if I bring a friend?" And he goes, it, "Is a friend a worker? Is he in the business?" He goes, "Yeah, man, we're traveling to a show right now." And he goes, "Tell the friend to kiss my ass." <laughs> And I'm like, dude, Steve Austin told me to kiss his ass. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. You know, I don't know if I can cuss on this. Sorry. I don't you know can. I don't mind. What. I don't know. All right. Um, next to you know, dude. <laughs> next to you know, he goes, yeah, dude, bring him. <laughs> and he comes and he's like, well, it looks like we're going to Steve Austin's house on Sunday, bro. And I was like, sweet. So we show up to Steve Austin's house. Tell you a funny story. I don't know if we have time for a story. Oh, we have I time. Guess. Yes. All right. Tell you a funny story. I have, I have two dogs now. Uh-huh. But before I got to Austin's house, I I used to have a, a huge fear of dogs. <laughs> huge fear of dogs. And Austin has two dogs. Oh, gosh. So we show up to Austin's house. Austin just got it back from the gym. He's outside talking to his neighbor. And um, we show up early. We're like, oh, we're going to be a little early. We'll park down the street. You know, we don't want to bug him. We're passing by, and Austin's looking at us as we pass by. <laughs> in the car he calls aj he goes hey bro is that was that you in the car he goes yeah he goes just pull up right here so we pull out i get out i meet austin you know oh you're a good looking kid you know <laughs> we walk in first thing that happens is dog jumps on me jumps right on top of me and i'm trying so hard sean not to freak out yeah and i'm sweating already because steve austin's next to me and i got beads of sweat and the dog's jumping on me, and I'm trying so hard not to freak out. <laughs> so we go inside. Austin's like, hey, I just got back from the gym. I'm going to grab a quick, quick, you know, quick shower. You know, I'm talking to Austin's wife. His dog comes and lays in my lap. Oh, man. Just lays. Just puts his head in my, you know, head in my lap. Austin walks out, and he looks over, and he goes, I've never seen my dog do that with anybody. And I'm like, oh, good, because he must, this dog must feel that I'm nervous as hell right now. Yeah. He's trying to calm me the fuck down. Um, we head next door. He goes, let's go next door, guys. So his 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 uh, podcast is three seventeen Gimmick Street. We're at three sixteen Gimmick Street, yeah. the main house. So we head next door to three seventeen Gimmick Street, and he's setting up the microphones for the podcast, and he's setting up three microphones. And I'm like, why are you setting up three mic? I wanted to be a fly on the wall. I was just expecting to be a fly on the wall. He's like, oh, I might throw some questions to you. Oh, all right, that's cool. You know. Next thing you know, me and Austin are rapping about music, and he's like, hey, man, tell me about you. So I tell him about my addiction issues and so on and so forth. And, you know, at that time, I think I was maybe four and a half years clean and sober, give or take. And he's like, oh, so you have, like, a little bit of a backstory, something that possibly could help somebody. And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you mind if I podcast you? And I'm like, yeah, man, that's cool. I, I Freaking out inside, you know. And he's like, yeah, you know, let's do it. And you could tell in the interview how nervous i was because that was my first like real interview right you could tell how nervous i was yeah. by the way that i voiced everything and the way that i worded everything and then i gradually relaxed through the interview so um i didn't expect anything of it i really didn't sean i was expecting to maybe put it in the archives maybe clip it together something next thing you know austin texts me maybe a couple days later and goes hey your your uh your podcast dropped at this at, at, on this day and we'll be we'll be tweeting about it. It Did it dropped, Sean. And my phone. That's what I was gonna ask. Whoosh. Like, did, did things just blow up? Like, did you have friends? Like, here's the thing. If I'll 
interview, say, Bret Hart. I'll have people that will pop up to me from high school that I have not talked to since, and they'll be like, oh, that's awesome. You always said you were going to do this. Like, did you have people that, like, didn't even, like, care about wrestling or anything saying, Steve Austin? You're talking to Steve Austin? Uh, yes. And a lot of people go, and my inbox was just a goodbye inbox. It, it really was. It was just like, I didn't want to deal with my phone because the minute that came out, the minute, because I was on a little bit of AJ's podcast as well. Yeah. So Austin at the end of AJ's was like, we're going to have a, we're going to interview Sledge down the road. Stay tuned to that. You know, and then we had the release date of when it came out. Yeah. And I think, I, I think I, I man, within maybe an hour, man, I, I was booked solid. That's awesome. Booked solid man within maybe an hour hour and a half by the end of the day definitely i was i was booked out for like three or four months so have have you been in touch with austin at all since then or is, oh yeah uh, how how has that been good man he uh he's very uh i talked to steve maybe once a couple months yeah just a text real quick hey brother how's it going good uh i sent him my ring of honor debut i sent him when i took a video of me signing my contract I sent him a video of that I, I before I went to the tryout, I, I talked to him, you know, over the phone and asked him, hey, man, do you have any advice before I head in there? And he goes, leave no doubt. In their minds. Leave no doubt. Go in there and be the badass m- motherfucker. I know you can be and go kill that shit. Pretty, All right. pretty All solid right, person to get advice from, I'd assume. He's, man, <laughs> if it wasn't for him and I thank him all the time, I really do. And he always tells me, shut the fuck up. But, um. <laughs> If if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be probably in the position I am right now. Especially, you know, even with AJ Kirsch, I wouldn't be in the position that I am right now. I really wouldn't. Well, the position you're in now is, is Ring of Honor. You've you've re-signed with them. That's not all you're doing. You, you got a Twitch as well. Twitch is blowing up. We did, we just got one ourselves. Hell yeah! But uh, tell us about your Twitch and, and what you do over there. It's one of those things that happened out of the pandemic. I was bored. <laughs> yeah, it really was. I was doing it on Instagram Live where I would just go on Instagram Live and talk to people and see what was good. And I had a couple guys pop on. Like I had Silas Young come on. and He's great. We just, I, I just sit there and drink coffee with people and, and talk. And Zicky, you know, another you know hat to Zicky, you know, the Twitch god himself. Um, I'm going to tweet him that. Be like, you're the Twitch god. And he might be like, that's outlandish. Um, <laughs> he goes, dude, why aren't you doing this on Twitch? And I'm like, ah, yeah. and he goes, and I had a buddy. I always believed that it's, if the door opens twice, you have to go through it. And I had a buddy a year before, Marty the Moth, who is a good, good buddy of mine, says you should get on Twitch. And I was like, yeah. and then Ziggy said, hey, you should get on Twitch. Okay, door opens twice. You got to go through it. It was like the wrestling door for me. Closed once, didn't go through it, opened up again, went through it. Now I'm here. Um, and it just gradually kind of grew, and I kind of got into it. Uh, it was just one of those things where it just kind of people started. And I started getting good guests. I've had Angelina Love. I've had anybody from like Angelina Love to Jay Lethal to Sunny Kiss to um, motivational speakers to you name it, man. Like people literally just come to listen to me talk. It's awesome, isn't it? And it has helped me tremendously to learn how to talk better. So when I'm doing interviews like this, I'm not stuttering over my words and going um like uh, yes. you know like you you know you know when you people are doing interviews and they're fresh and they don't do a whole lot of them they stutter over their words a lot they're not very well spoken they're not you know so i use it as a tool to help learn how to speak well and it's been tremendous sledge you got so much going on you, you've done so much it, it, before we got on the air you're like you're like you don't even know me. How ah! dare you? How <laughs> dare you? I was giving. I was just ribbing you. I How was just dare you? you? I was. A, I was a, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm like this. You know, you. It was you and CVV are oh, my love two Chris. top top guys that I've been trying to get on their show. Chris is so nice. Like, I remember once I was like busting his balls. It, we were in Winston Salem. I was like, man, I'm trying to get interviews. But some asshole named Chris Van Vliet moved an hour away from me, and he's taking them all. And he thought I was serious for a second. He's like, oh, 
oh, and I was like, Chris, I'm joking. I'm joking, my man. Like, he is such a kind soul and a good person and great at what he does. But my qualm with him, my boss was like, you know what? Let's have Chris up in a suite in Vegas, double or nothing weekend, and we'll interview him and we'll let him order anything that he wants, anything he wants off of this menu. He ordered chicken tenders. Chris Van Vliet ordered chicken tenders what off a room chicken, service menu. What the chicken tenders? I'd have been like, okay, man, it's on you. Guess I'll uh, just uh, get a bunch of uh, sweets and all this other fun yeah. stuff and hope he's, for the best. He's an amazing dude. But a as are you, Sledge, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. But tell people where they can find you, where, where they can where they can see you. Obviously, Ring of Honor programming on Honor Club. and I mean, they make it so easy to watch their show. It is it's everywhere. There's, there's no reason anybody can't watch Ring of Honor TV, uh, but tell the people where they can find you. And, and I'll literally walk them through how they could watch it right now. If you guys don't yeah. know how to watch Ring of Honor TV or you don't know if it's shown in your area, head over to ROHWrestling.com. At the very bottom of the page, you can press TV listings. Click there. Type in your zip code, and we'll tell you exactly where you can watch Ring of Honor at what time. Also, you can watch it on the Fight TV app. Every Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's live every Monday right there. You never know who's going to pop up. To find me, you could just tweet me, you could Instagram me, you could TikTok me, or you could find me on Twitch at Sledge805. I keep it easy for everybody. Those are my tags. Follow me. Come join the party. We're, uh, we, do, we do metal Sundays on Twitch, man, where we just listen to metal music and talk about metal. So it's pretty awesome. So I have a great community on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Sledge. You can find a lot worse things to do. Sledge, I want to thank you so much. We'll be talking again in the future. I look forward to it, my friend. Thank you so much. Guys, until next time, we're out.